see, today is April 10th, 2013, and I'm here again with Al Lieberman and uh, Glenn Riddell, who's here today, and uh, we're just kind of going over a few things. So one thing I did want to get, um, just because it's so interesting and I didn't know this could happen, was what happened with the reels of old film, because I guess they turn into something that's highly flammable. Yes. Uh, when I took them to the person that uh, does transferring onto uh, uh, discs. Yeah, DVDs, yeah. DVDs. Um, she would, I had three canisters, large canisters, are 16 millimeter after each, each uh, uh, combat session. Uh, when they cleared the, and prepared the guns, they would also take the film out of the 16 millimeter black and white camera, which sits in the wing inboard from the right hand uh, guns. And every time we would squeeze the trigger, that camera would go. When we landed, one of the things they would do was take the film cartridge out, send it to tactical headquarters, it would be processed, sent back to the individual squadrons. We had three squadrons in our fighter group. And uh, they would, our, the armament officer, a commissioned officer, uh, which incidentally, he was from uh, St. Paul. Oh. Huh. And, uh, Do you remember what his name was or is it this no, point? No, yeah. uh, I really Probably don't. be in the records somewhere. Uh, well, my, my records were stolen. I told you about that yeah. last session. At any rate, uh, I, I had somehow the, the armament officer, oh, he would splice it onto a master reel. So periodically we would have a session, a critique session with the, uh, we had two officers in our squadron uh, that were uh, ground officers, uh, the intelligence group, and they would have all of the pilots together. We would see our film. Uh, we would discuss any point of interest or something, and they would make notes, and all this uh, intelligence data would probably go into headquarters. and. Uh, so we kept getting bigger and bigger reels that were in the possession of the armament officers. And uh, somehow we were made a pres present when I, the night before we were leaving to come home, uh, two of us, to come home on leave and then rejoin the squadron or be reassigned uh, to, to uh, uh, some other type duty, uh, I was going to be, if that's what I chose, I was going to be an instructor in, uh, in, in a, a, at some, uh, we were talking about it before mm -hmm. I came. A train, like a training uh, yes, facility. Yes, in, in, down mm -hmm. in Texas, mm -hmm. which they did send me after my 30 days. Okay, so this, you, th you think this was Pershing Field north of uh, Dallas? Not, not Pershing. There's some other name. There was that. Well, there's Amarillo, but that's way up north. No, there's. This was yeah, an airfield. I, I can yeah. look at a map and tell you the city. Then oh, you okay. Could, yeah. You could figure out what uh, air base it was. But <clears throat> um, anyway, I had three reels that was was all all my film was spliced sequentially, and uh, I was home in Minneapolis. Incidentally, uh, I was on, on the leave, a flak leave we called it then, now it's R&R &R, uh, in uh, Cannes, right near Nice, in, in the south, on the, on the uh, Mediterranean. Oh yeah, south, that's nice. South of France, when Germany capitulated. And that was quite a party down there. <laughs> I'll bet. And then I was back in the Minneapolis for a 30-day leave, 
and our entire fighter group had been, I guess, packed up and was being shipped through the Panama Canal to CBI, China, Burma, India, oh. the Arab War. And that's, it was going to be either that or being an instructor down in uh, at a flight school. And um, so while I was home for that 30-day leave, uh, I had that, this film. And at that time, um, and I was still in uniform, and uh, I happened to be in uniform that one day, and I took one of the canisters, and I went over to a pretty good-sized uh, uh, film photographic shop, uh, National Camera Exchange, <laughs> now they're a giant outfit. Yeah. Um, and I told him I had some 16 millimeter black and white and I'd like to look at it again. And they couldn't do enough for me. They put me into a viewing room, showed me how to thread the projector and got me all set. And I turned it on and I was watching. And it would be, you know, mission after mission. And I can't tell you whether it was the beginning of the three reels or the end mm -hmm. of the three reels. Uh, in other words, the beginning of my missions or the end of my missions, uh, at, at near the tail end. And, uh, but I sat and watched them for a while and uh, I guess I got bored. <laughs> so I stopped, rewound and thanked him and, and closed up the canister and left. And now these would have been every mission from when you got into France all the way through the end of the war? Yep. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. it was through the end of the war with Germany, right. And that's the last time those canisters or any canister was opened. And after that I just put them, all three of them, in a plastic uh, bag, you know, like Target uh, mm -hmm. shopping bags, and sealed it up with a, a, a twister to make sure it was nice and airtight or reasonably, and that's where they sat. Then, it was, I think last week, or the week before, no, it was last week, the beginning of, of April 2013. And I took him directly to the person that does transferring onto DVDs. And she, and I was standing there, and when you took the canister out of the bag, plastic bag, it was greasy and it, just like a powder, a lot of it on our, our hands. And she had trouble getting it open, finally it opened. And then when you took the one half of the canister, the top or the bottom, and held it up to the light, you could see it was all just corroded, wide open to the air. And, and uh, she tried to take one of the reels out, and it was all uh, uh, melted together, you might say. Kind of stuck together? Yeah. yeah. It was useless, hopeless. Um, the person that was going to transfer my 16 millimeter black and white uh, old-fashioned film onto a DVD uh, finally got the first two canisters of the uh, all uh, accumulated film, uh, and what was it? It, uh, it was patched on, or uh, they spliced it into a reel. It, yeah. Spliced into the master reel, mm -hmm. and uh, she was virtually uh, amazed and extremely concerned. She says, "I don't want it here. I." It could burn this building down. It can explode on you. If you had walked across a carpet and had any uh, 
static electricity, and he reached over and picked that up. It would either blow up or burst into flames instantly. Wow. Mm. And uh, it's, 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 the film is made out of nitrate. And so we very gingerly set it aside and we opened up the third one. The third one was a different basic material for the film oh. strip. So the underlying material was different on the third yeah. one? Yeah. Oh, the, okay. The, uh, what do they call it? Uh, the, the Cellulose or something? Or yeah. Celluloid? It's, that's the basic type of material. So she was able to transfer that. So I do have yeah. one spliced master reel. Whether it was on the beginning part of my uh, uh, career over in, in Germany or in the, in the West, or whether it was a tail end, I can't tell you. Yeah. But uh, we might be able to tell by the dates because each segment of splice is, is titled, and that came out real good, but the rest is hard to see. But it wasn't the exciting kind of film you would expect to see in aerial combat, because this was a thunderbolt. And out of 74 missions, only four of them were actually flown by me, my missions, um, for the purpose that the Thunderbolt was originally designed and built, which was high altitude escort with tremendous firepower. And we had, uh, you know, it wasn't a, 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 a sealed cockpit, but it was, we had uh, oxygen masks. And uh, we were under orders at 10,000 feet to put the mask on because at 10,000 you only have, uh, as they explained to us, 50% uh, of the oxygen that you have at ground level, mm -hmm. at sea level. So anyway. Uh, now I do want to mention one thing that I learned from Kathy Hovda, who's the head of Cool Water Media, and she said the woman you were dealing with is the leading film preservation person for doing this kind of work in the Twin Cities. And no so it's kidding. a very specialized thing. So what she told you would be from the, the top in terms of the people that do film Absolutely. preservation. And, and I believe her. Yeah. She was very serious about it. And in fact, I said, what should we do with it? She says, I don't know, but you shouldn't have it in your house. It could burn your house down. She said, uh, and I'm not going to throw it in a trash can here or out there. That could catch on fire. No, I said, I said, well, we only have the one choice then. Call the authorities. Mm -hmm. So she called the fire department, said this isn't an emergency, but here's what we have. We have some film that is uh, degraded and uh, looks to be a fire danger. And could you send somebody over? to take possession of it and get it away from us. And oh, I would say within 20 minutes, they were there. Hmm. Uh, just not, not a fire rig. Well, I don't know what they drove, but uh, three of them came in. Three uniformed firemen showed up to in, in dispose here. of the danger. Of yeah, this. and yeah. They, they took it. Uh, they took it and they were, one of the persons, was very nice. He said he would, he would uh, contact. Uh, oh, no, this was a, a female. In 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 a fire, rig, fire uniform. And she said she would call the, uh, uh, the society. The, uh, uh, what is it, uh, Minnesota Historical Society. Mm -hmm. And they did call me the next day. And uh, they wanted to know a little bit about it. And I said, but I, I saw it. They hadn't seen it yet. And I said, there's no image on it. It's, it's a, a block of extremely flammable, <laughs> dangerous material. 
So that uh, that ended up with the fireman, I suppose, and yeah. Uh, it's, uh, so it's been it's been disposed yeah, of already. It's a hazardous waste at this point. I have one reel left, and uh, we'll take a look at it, and I'll I'll explain it later what it was all about. But uh, it it was all ground support, and. Um, when you, when you take a, a, a plane starting up at about uh, 10,000 feet and you're coming down uh, and they're shooting up, you're, you're going to be concerned that you don't just uh, give them a, a good shot. And so we would shoot our guns periodically and they could see uh, I think we had a tracer every uh, tenth round or something, I'm guessing. And uh, so all you see is the tracers popping out, mm -hmm. going down. So part of what you would do as kind of a tactic was this suppressive fire where you just fire and maybe you didn't have a target, but at least you were... Some of it, yeah. and, and there's no way of knowing. Uh, some of it, there was no target, it was just to uh, suppress the ground fire yeah. and get those people running away from their guns. Yeah. Uh, and the, and uh, of course they had uh, 30 caliber, 50 caliber, 20 millimeter, which was explosive shells. Uh, they would were set to explode at a certain altitude. We could usually tell it was up around about uh, 2,000 or 2,500 feet and we'd dive, but there would be just like a bunch of uh, little, like white little uh, puffs just floating in the air. And of course, when you see that, there's no more danger. <laughs> the explosion is already gone. But, um, and you know, it was just laid out like a, just a very ultra sparse type of cloudiness or something. Mm -hmm. Now was this a 88 millimeter or a 20 millimeter? Or? 20, 20 millimeter. Oh, okay. Now we had a 20 millimeter in the Navy. The Navy ships had a pom pom thing, but this was the German version of yeah, that. Yeah, and, okay. and that's what it would do. They would go pop, 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 pop. Yeah. And um, well, I always wondered, and I always wanted to ask if you could see the stuff coming from the ground. You no. know. Because, you know, if you fire a regular uh, no, rifle, you wouldn't see the bullet or anything. Nor do you see a 20 millimeter. Yeah. It just will explode. And, you know, they would hope that uh, if they hit you, they would blow apart whatever yeah. is right uh, right there. Would but, it be, uh, you think it was fused, so it would time, yeah. when you reach a certain elevation, then this thing blows up? I, I'm sure it was time. Yeah. From the time that left the barrel to... It would go off. Yeah. Did you get hit with any any aircraft? I never <clears throat> got much in the way of that except one time only. And I didn't have a little camera at that time. I would love to have had the camera then. Yeah. I was, and I can't remember what it was, I was coming off of a dive or, uh, and all of a sudden there was a, a bang. And, and a, a slight, just a very slight rocking. And I looked out and, and my, my flight wasn't impaired that I can remember. But I looked at my left wing and there was a hole right through it, right out in the middle of the wing. Hmm. And you could tell that it was from the bottom up because it was flared up. Wow. And it must have taken out uh, one or more of the, the guns, and it didn't hit any control cables for my ailerons, mm -hmm. or, or it would have been, it would have been uh, uh, curtains suddenly. Yeah. And, uh, and it didn't do anything to any of the structure at all. Now, you didn't have a fuel tank in the wings in those uh, no, planes. no, we yeah. had a fuel tank and a fuselage. Yeah. yeah. No, in the wing, uh, I somewhere have pictures in some of, 
and I, I told you how I managed to have a, a small little, uh, not, a, not a tiny, uh, like a Minox. Uh, you remember the Minoxes? Uh, little miniature cameras? Yeah, super miniature. But I, I never had uh, any of those, but I had a small 35 millimeter black and white that I bought shortly after uh, uh, Paris was liberated. And I happened to be there for a couple of days. We'd gotten sent in to pick up some uh, replacement aircraft mm -hmm. at Philip Kublai Airport or uh, Air Base. Uh, on the f edge of uh, Paris, and uh, I was pre pre warned to be prepared with ammunition. And when I got to Paris, I did. I had ammunition. I had uh, cigarettes <laughs> and uh, chocolate bars. <laughs> you were popular in Paris, I assume. Well, I ended up with a small little camera and a paper bag. Believe it or not, with about. 20 or more, or two dozen real or uh, uh, cartridges of Eastman Kodak 35 millimeter black and white film. They didn't have anything but black and white, of course, in those days. Mm -hmm. And when I got back to the squadron, because when I was in high school, uh, one of the things I had was to be the, uh, the yearbook photographer. So I was pretty familiar with cameras, mm -hmm. and uh, so I, I shot a lot of uh, film, and I've, you've seen that uh, with oh, yeah, planes yeah, beautiful. in Four. formation, uh, on for, formed formation centered on the plane I was flying, and uh, I took a lot of one-handed pictures and did one-handed flying. <laughs> <laughs> That's and really a, coordination when you're flying the plane and you're taking the photograph. Oh yeah. Require. And, and I'm here to tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> and so are the guys. I hope they're still alive. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't <laughs> crash into anybody. They were flying on formation from me. But you always flew single-handedly, didn't you? Did you oh, yeah. put both hands on your... No, no. One, my right hand was on this stick, which also had a trigger for the uh, eight, uh, 50 millimeter, or 50 caliber, not millimeter, <laughs> uh, 50 caliber uh, machine guns. How did you turn the camera on? Was that just automatic when you pulled the trigger? Yes, oh. yes, it, it ran from the, uh, the shooting of the guns at the beginning of the shooting, and or firing of the guns, and for about one second afterwards yeah. to, record whatever was being struck by the, the projectiles. Now you told me something very interesting which I, I we had heard Al Quee give a talk and he talked about getting fixated on his target and he came down so low he actually <laughs> saw fence posts out of the side of the thing and you said you're real careful about this with the P-47. Oh, yeah. yeah, we were warned about target fixation. You could just one more burst, oh, just one more. I'm going to get him, and bam, you got him, and it got you. No. So with a heavier airplane, you had to be really cautious about not oh. going into the ground. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We, we, we would mush, because the uh, T-Bolt, Thunderbolt, was a fantastic airplane, powerful uh, armament. Um, it could take any kind of abuse, almost. Unbelievable. And uh, it had an airframe that was just, well, I'm here to show it. Yeah. But uh, it, it, would, it was extremely heavy, and it would uh, mush. It come roaring down, and we would come down under full throttle, and, and uh, because we don't want to be a sitting target. And then we had lots of steam to pull out. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had to make sure that we didn't mush. And you could mush pretty good. Mush meaning you could drop yeah. further than you're intending. As yeah. you're going to pull out, it, mm -hmm. it would just 
keep going down. Yeah. In other words, you level out, but your plane, the weight of the plane is still dropping. Yeah. Yeah. We, we had a saying <coughs> that the T-bolt had a gliding angle of a streamlined crowbar. <laughs> okay. Did you ever get in a ground effect? Would that help? When you're, once you're you know, close to the ground, you're getting ground effect, it gives you extra lift? I don't recall, no. You know? no. Well, I was told by uh, Lou Martin, who was around P-47s, uh, I don't think he ever flew them. No, he didn't. Um, but he, um, let's see, he said they actually had cases where two cylinders were shot off of the engine and the thing kept going. I, I will attest to that. Now, we didn't see it happen, but... Uh, we would, you know, the word would get out uh, such and such a fighter group over uh, uh, 50 miles away or uh, one of them. In fact, I think it might have happened to one of our planes. And one of our planes did come in and mush so far that they either ticked some ground with with uh, probably the the part as as you're flying the part that would be so close to the ground would be just the very tip of a, uh, the propeller oh so you could bend the and propeller hitting the well, you know, or something yeah well that could have happened but whatever it was blew up a lot of gravel it could have been just the extreme uh, air flow and it looked like the bottom of his wings and the plane were just peppered with another machine gun. Well we just saw a documentary on the P-51 and I guess comparing the to the P-51 being a water-cooled engine seemed to have more problem with the ground fire than the P-47. You could survive getting hit and keep going whereas you hit the water coolant uh, system on a P-51. Then, then it's gone, all gone. Yeah. That's the end of it. No, uh, we, we had cases of getting hit, getting a, a cylinder shot off, mm -hmm. and it would still fly. It was, it was a remarkable plane. Yeah. Well, I'm anxious to see the, the video. It's just well, something that... Uh, uh, I've got a computer and I got one of these to look at it. Unless you've got something else, we could look at it. Should we just set it up and then uh, you'll look at it and we'll all look at it and we'll see what we can see. Well, yeah, but uh, then uh, we're going to have to have another session. Okay. Uh, because I'm going to have to. How long is this going for? Hmm? How long is the session, the uh, film? Oh, I don't know. Half an hour? Oh, could be more than that. Oh, really? Oh, well, yeah. that's good. Yeah. So they did recover. Probably was but it was it a full reel or was it part of the reel? That, did you no, have a no, sense? the whole reel. Oh, okay. Well, that's because terrific. it's a different material. Yeah. And it, it didn't turn out. It's, it evidently wasn't. Yeah. That kind now, of. Now, Kevin, uh, you said you could take this and make a copy of it right oh. now. Well. My, uh, yeah, just Today. depending on the timing. I don't know how much time you have, but yeah, I've got the computer here if you wanted to to make try and make a copy, sure. but it would take a you know a few minutes to, yeah, we to do that. that. You wanna try, we try to make set a copy? Up. Gonna, okay. You can look at it probably looking at it. Okay, go ahead, I'll just be doing some technical stuff. Go ahead. Some of it was protective fire just to keep the people from setting at their emplacements and shooting back. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to have them head for the hills. So when the, um, so the other guy was gonna, was he on like a bombing run or a strafing run? Or, and you're, you're doing suppressive fire? Or? No, 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 no. No, we, all that I think I'm doing here, uh, out of the, I started to tell you, out of 74 missions, I only flew four of them for escort. All the rest of them, 70 missions, were what we called armed recce, armed reconnaissance. And we had a, a, a quadrant or something 
of ground that we were out to cover. You're responsible for it. Yeah. What kind of targets on the ground, like uh, locomotives or something? Or we we trucks? didn't. I didn't have the luck to catch any locomotives. Boy, that would have been oh, to come in on on a train and just walk 850s right down the train and then hit that engine and watch it blow. That would have been something. Well, there's some, uh, in Harold Asper's uh, DVD, he uh, would hit a locomotive, you know, the old steam locomotive. Sure. And there was well, an that's immediate all, response. That's all they had. Yeah, it, was, it would shoot up uh, the steam or whatever it would come well, out sure. of those things. Be like a, because that's how they run. Yeah. By collecting the steam or holding it in and uh, getting so them the run. The shell could go through a steam engine. Oh, hell yeah. yes. Wow. That's a 50 caliber armor piercing incendiary that burn its way through. Yeah. Plus, you had the speed of the airplane on top of the speed of the bullet. Well, really th moving. That's, that's even. Uh, I don't know. All the weight come out of a dive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What but was the speed uh, of a P 47? I have no idea now. It's, it had to be under. under uh, uh, what do they call it? Uh, uh, compressibility. Oh yeah. Well, if you're escorting a B4, uh, B17, I think they were flying at what 250 or they were something. They above 250. Yeah. Well, I imagine we were probably up around 350 coming out of a dive and full throttle. Yeah. Straight down. I with, think with that average. streamlined crowbar. <laughs> One thing I've always wondered about was occasionally you'll see in the left side of a combat gun footage this little black thing and it I don't know what it is but it, it, it drops down and then it, it goes back up and I don't know if it's the trigger you know when you're pulling the trigger well that I'm sure it'll be in one of these you know I don't know it out. I, I don't recall seeing it but I haven't looked at enough of my footage. Well, Kevin, you get the thing ready and put it on this machine here for him to look at while you do another copy okay. if you want. Sure. But here's what would happen, Kevin. <clears throat> I was coming down in a dive and there's mm -hmm. no sense shooting when you're 5,000 feet up. You gotta be getting pretty close to pull out. Mm -hmm. And all you see is ground down there because you're not, from the time I'm coming down at full throttle mm -hmm. and, and I'm shooting my guns. So what are you gonna see? You're gonna see fields, period. Yeah. You're not well, gonna, you're we'll not see, gonna, we'll see what's just. Why don't gonna, you pull around and well, sit next to him sure, and we'll, I'll turn this around. Okay, but you're not gonna see a, a yeah. gun emplacement or anything. We, we either had targets that we were after, that they knew something was there, or like gun emplacements or whatever, or I was just doing it to keep the the, the firing. Well, it says down. November 9th of 44. That's the first first one there. So this is the first time you've seen this in 68 years, maybe? Okay, see the tracers? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's good. You know, you can see the trees and everything. There, oh, that's very good. Looks like you're going after something on the ground there. But we knew what it was, but... <clears throat> now on the left side up here, you see this, the, just if you watch, there's a black thing that comes out. It's some kind of a thing related to the... Well, that's not bad. Looks like a smoke or there, or a cloud or something. We have something going. Okay, that's the end of it. Yeah. And, and you'll see a title. What's the date? I missed it. I
because she had a, a television screen and I could see it. Yeah. Oh, these aren't that. These are pretty clear, and you especially you can see the the tracer rounds, and then uh, the trees are clear, and what's on the ground is not oh, bad it's there. Up the highway. October. That's October seventh of forty four. And it said 19th Tactical Command. Uh, yes. Can you see that? You can adjust it too if it's too. Well, then you guys can't see it. Oh, you go ahead. And no, we're, we're okay. We want you to see it. Well, if, if you're going to. There you're banking. You see, it doesn't show that it's an airplane and with a ground. Uh, yeah, it looks like and, it's night almost. Well, I suppose the cameras were kind of basic. I would assume they're probably built for being rugged, but the well, the the you know the today you got all this fancy stuff for the lighting, but that's yeah. visible. No, you what can, what I saw was much more visible than this. Yeah, on, on the television. Now there's screen. December twelfth. That's during the Battle of the Bulge, isn't it? Not quite. It's before the Battle of the Bulge. Oh, okay. That started later in December. Eighteenth of December, my birthday. Here, 23rd. This will be Battle That's of the Bulge. That's during the Battle of the Bulge. So you did some support, ground support? Oh, yeah. I, I flew a few missions over the Bulge. And that, the flak was... Uh, it Heavy? Was, oh, unbelievable. Yeah. Unbelievable. It's because, day. because, you know, it was all surrounded. Mm -hmm. And they were just pounding away. So you we, did you fly we, around Bastogne, or was it... I, you know, yeah. the bulge is pretty yeah. big. Oh, okay. Yeah, we we were, um, we had some targets. That's very clear. That's well lit. What is that? It's a building. Well, I'm coming in on it. Yeah, I better that's pull very out clear. Or, I'll <laughs> you better, better pull out. You better or, get up, Al. <laughs> or, or I'll never make uh, 21. <laughs> yeah, that's something on a road. Yeah. Boy, that's a powerful airplane to see all that stuff. You can yeah. tell when it hits because it's got a, like a red, uh, I mean a little flash of light. Yeah, there, there was something I... Some of the light and dark, you can we can adjust that later with the, there's some programs that would lighten it up if it's dark and darken it up if it's too light, so. Well, uh, yeah, you, you've got my original disc. Yeah, it's, it's, that's what we're watching right now. What's the date on that? February 23rd, 45. This See, must I, be our last film. Yeah. The last reel. Right, yeah. They probably had improved the yeah. underlying celluloid to something else, thinking, some other yeah. material. Well, what we should do is get next time is we'll get this on a bigger screen so you can see it better. You okay. Know? And uh, but now you're going to leave that one with me. Yeah, the, that's the original, and I'm just going to try and make a copy here. But oh, I, oh, I see. But but you have the. Uh, Did you already copy it on your computer? Uh, it's copied onto my computer, and I'll give you the original back today. Okay. And then uh, I might be able to make you some extra copies while we're... Now, is there any degrading? No. Digital doesn't degrade it. It'll transfer it just the way it was originally. From this to that? Yeah. To, to another disk? There'll be no degradation. It's just ones and zeros, so... It's not like the film will degrade, you know, yeah. if you transfer it. And a VHS tape would degrade, but this uh, this shouldn't degrade. It's uh, it's just transferring a sequence of ones and zeros. It isn't nitrate. It is not nitrate. <laughs> In theory, it'll be around hundreds of years from now. So. Well, you can see a lot of the targets you're shooting at. I'm amazed at what you can see there. I mean, you can see you're coming up to it looked like a farmhouse or a, a building.
March 14th. That would be when you were going into Remagen, into Germany. Yeah, could you tell me a little no, bit about no, Remag that? No, Remagen was uh, in, uh, it wasn't in Germany, I don't think. Well, that was the bridge into Germany, wasn't it? The bridge over Remagen took you from France into Germany? Yeah, yeah. And, and I, I was on a mission there. March 17th. Yeah, I, I flew... Uh, I flew through a couple of very important dates, mm -hmm. Remagen, and boy, that that was that that's when it it really turned the, the tables. The, that was that, when the the Americans crossed into Germany. Or? Yeah, yeah, because they didn't blow up the bridge. Yeah. Now you were at the bridge, and what were you doing? Strafing ground targets. Sure. To keep the Germans from like retaking the yeah. bridge, and that was right after they had, they'd gotten across. Yeah. Germany, where the the Nazis were um, going hell bent for election <laughs> back for home. Yeah. Well, there that was, was still a contested uh, bridge, I think. There, and then eventually, wasn't it blew up or something? No, no. It, it collapsed finally about a week, ten it, days later. Did it? Yeah. And then they they reconstructed they got, it. Or they something. got ten days worth of stuff across. Yeah. And then the, the the fatigue of the bridge finally collapsed. And I, if I remember this right, didn't they they built a second uh, span to keep going? You know. Yeah. So they had enough time after they got the first group across. But yeah, it was critical. That was a critical moment in World War II. Was, and right. you, were, you were there. March 18th. It's almost like you're doing it every day here. Yeah, oh sure. I suppose uh, you probably had... Did you, was your temple every day flying or did they give you a day off in between? Or? No, no. We, we, we were they, up almost every day. And well, did you well, fly they, more than one or just one mission per no, day? No, I remember I actually did about... Uh, I remember I had close to eight hours of flying one day. Uh, there was one one of the, my four escort missions, mm -hmm. uh, and then I had I went back up uh, for something else, whether it was another escort or whether it was a um, armed recce or something. Uh, I can't tell you. Were you escorting like B seventeens or? I can't remember what we escorted. No, it was it wasn't the heavy. Yeah. It was uh, it was B twenty fives. Yeah, or something. like a medium bomber. Yeah, it okay. was medium. Yeah. That that I do remember. Well, I don't know if you can see this, but there have been some really good ones that are quite visible. Yes, they are. Look at that. That's the first copy done. March 19th. Say, uh, by the way, guys, um, instead of making pictures, you might have to take notes or something. So I got, mm -hmm. I got a little pad of paper and you can write notes. This thing really goes pretty long. Right. Here. What? Oh, what do you got there? Wow, that's nice. Yeah. How do you turn it on? You press? No. I think you turn it. It's you twist. You twist. Yep. And those you never want to let somebody say uh, here. Give me a pen, I gotta sign my name. <laughs> and then let them put it in their pocket. That, that's a good one. Yeah, that, that uh, you can go into Office Max, but don't do it, because they, they, their profiteers call me. <laughs> okay. Because, here, Kevin? Yeah. When, when you use it so much, if you can, people 
keep people from stealing it. Here. Office Max and all the places. This is like a Schaefer or a Parker. Oh, yeah. Wow. You can, you can okay. Get a, you can get a replacement brief, brief uh, fill, so. uh, on the ink. Boy, these have improved over the years, haven't yeah, they? Yeah, from the, the old ones with the bleak. Well, thank you. I bought the first Reynolds ballpoint from my mother for Christmas back in 45 or 46, whenever they yeah, came out. Yeah, yeah. And boy, the, if you weren't careful, it would bleed all over your clothes. Oh, yeah, that, God, I that remember. That was terrible. <laughs> we, uh, we, we couldn't put it down there in your fabric because if you did, it would bleed out of the fabric. Oh, you can't put it in your pocket. You haven't got a pocket. Oh, yeah. I got one right here okay. on my coat. See? Whoop, there's a pen there already. I'll put it in the pocket right there next to that one. But I was going to just verify that it's working. Yep, look at that. You just touch it. I have pens at home. I circle and circle and they don't work. <laughs> and I can't throw them away. Well, Al, I think this is a real success because it's still going and I can see the ground. And we'll get it on a bigger bigger screen in a dark room. And maybe we, you can, we'll do it another time. And then uh, we'll see, I, I'll look at this well, a couple of times and maybe I can spot, uh, you know, where it is and everything. Okay. Yeah, that was the end of that yeah, one. Now let me would... just test this, but this is your first copy. Okay, that's the copy I got. Uh, no, I'll give you your copy back here in a second. This is the original, which I'm going to give you right now. What would be nice, Alan, if you could narrate. This is, this is your original, and then I'm going to check, just test the copy here. As you're running it, you narrate it. That would be nice. I have no idea where it was or what it was. You can make it up. No. No, no, we don't want <laughs> nothing. <laughs> that wouldn't work. That was a copy. I'm, uh, I'm just checking it here. It's loading. Yep. It's doing it. Let, let Al see it. See if he approves. Well, well this is November 9th, 1944. Lieutenant A. H. Lieberman. So it, the copy is working fine. And I got the second one. Now. Yeah, it looks. Looks like the last one. So you couldn't tell the copy from the original. No. Digital. Yeah, you can see me pulling out. What I found looking at uh, Harold Asper's um, reel was the more times you looked at it, the more things you saw. Mm -hmm. It was really oh, surprising. Yeah. You know, after you got used to, you know, there's some jerkiness and stuff, and you know, you could see all kinds of stuff was in in those uh, in those films. Here, here's where it is. I, I was, I was going to tell you that, uh, yeah. that we, we supported, there was a, uh, when the, I don't know if it was before the Remagen, but uh, they were, they were pushing the, uh, the Nazis back anyway. Now, what is this? I'm making you copies. I got two done already. Well, that's How many would you like? Like five or? That would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah you were saying? That, uh, that they used to, um, if you ever get a, uh, if you've got a, a world atlas 
look at the map of uh, France and you'll, you can see to the, uh, let's see, the um, up is always north, right? Right, yeah. Okay, so, so it will be to the west From Paris, you go west, and you get to the English Channel in England, right? Yeah, I'd say northwest. Okay, all right, yes. So, you, you'll look and you'll see a little inlet. There's a big, actually pretty big harbor at Brest, B-R-E-S-T. Mm -hmm. And when they started pushing the Nazis back off of the beachheads, the, uh, there was a, a German regiment, I think it was, that was dug in right there by Brest Harbor, and they couldn't get them out of there. Uh -huh. And so... This was right after Normandy? Yeah. Okay. And, and uh, so our, our, we were then moved across the channel and we had well, quite a ways inland from there, I would say maybe 10 minutes um, or more. 10 minutes by flight time? Or, or? I don't know where, where the heck it was. It, it, they had to be, have been pushed back farther. Mm -hmm. They had some good ground and we had a fighter strip. And it was based at Rennes, R-E-N-N-E-S. Was it a dirt or did they have concrete or metal oh, no, mesh? Or? They were all the same, metal mesh. Oh, okay. Uh, they would either, they would grade it 5,000 feet. They would grade it, and then they would put in material, and then put straw down, and then they put sheet mesh, uh, just like uh, the bridge decking. Mm -hmm. and, and you could hear us rumble. Wow, when you hit that when, landing when we, green, when yeah. When we take it, uh, hit, would hit it, or when we'd take off, we, we would rumble down the, for, for 5,000 feet. That's an awful long runway. Well, it's a heavy, heavy plane, oh. I suppose, huh? You could take we, off quicker than that, couldn't you? No, not, not if, we're, our wings were loaded with 50 caliber. Oh, yeah, that's true. And then, we, under each wing, we could carry that one engine, we could carry each wing one thousand pound bomb, oh, and that's way out. Yeah. Now can you imagine how strong the airframe was where it was mated to the fuselage? Yeah, wow. And then under the belly we could carry napalm, now they call it something else. I think they still no, call we, it we, or, or a frag cluster. Now they call it anti-personnel. And that frag cluster is, I, it was about, about 40 bombs, about this big. Hmm. And around them was built just like a, a hand grenade. Oh, yeah. yeah and, and then there was, there was a, a prop on the front of it. Oh, yeah. And this is a fact. On all 40 bombs, there was a um, propeller, small propeller on the front of it, and it was pinned so it didn't turn. If one of those pins ever got out of there, hey, <laughs> goodbye airplane. Because it'll spin just so long, and then Blah. and. Each one of those pins was connected to 
the solenoid in the plane and or a cable. And so when we were ready to drop that anti-personnel, we called it a frag cluster, fragmentation cluster. We, we would have to arm arm the uh, the fuse arm the bombs so you're flying and you would you would arm them or? yeah okay when when we we would have i think a button or a um, something or in case all else failed a, a loop a little hand loop or something on the floor underneath us we could pull it and we were pulling the pin that was, was securing the propeller but I think it was also secured by a little cable or something for when it dropped away yeah I'm, I'm guessing I think that's how they did the B-17 bombs too is they had something that yeah. Uh, as it dropped, there was this. There must have been like a wire uh, or something otherwise. that secondarily yeah. protected you. Okay, so we would come in, and let's say we've got a big encampment that we're after. We come in and armor bombs, and then push a button and that would release it or if that didn't release it we could do it by hand for some reason if, if it didn't work did you ever have it hang up or yeah I was going to tell you about oh that. <laughs> he's working up to oh, that. <laughs> and but they said that those things were just touchy as hell so anyway um, those things we would let them loose, and the thing would drop away from us, the whole cluster frag all hooked together, and that would start evidently a prop someplace, and would go just so long, and then the whole thing was in a, uh, a bracket that would spring loose. And those 40 bombs would be scattered all over hell. Yeah, so it would like take out a field or something. And then just so long it would go and then it would go blam. Each one individually. And they were they were like a hand grenade only this big. And I suppose this was before the proximity fuses came no, out. No, it was later. No. Well, well, no, they had no. Them. We 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 had them. You did. Yeah. Oh. Maybe that's what set them off, or something. Yeah. But well, there's as I understand, there's different systems. Like you know, there's a barometric pressure thing can they blow it off. There's a timed fuse, and then there's this proximity fuse where it's seventy feet over the ground, and we, boom. We we had those. You did. Yeah. But at any rate, I came back because I couldn't get rid of my uh, anti-personnel, my frag cluster. Hanging out of the wing? Underneath. That's, and it was that armed? Was underneath. Oh, no. Was it armed? I mean, you had pulled the, to arm the thing? I couldn't get rid of it. I yeah. tried. Yeah, yeah. Wow. And, and so they told me to get the hell out of there and bail out. Did you do that? I landed. <laughs> oh. I figured. And we didn't have um, uh, ejection seats or anything. No. And, and uh, getting out of a T-bolt was tricky. We were told if you're going to get out, uh, jettison your canopy and then try to slither down the, sh the uh, fuselage. Well, I thought you had to fly upside down and drop out. Yeah, that's, yes. That was we, another we, way. Yeah. Either way, you hoped you didn't run into well, the rear end of the plane. We had an awful high uh, 
runner. Oh. Big tail. And uh, so it, it was pretty tricky to get out. It doesn't didn't blow you out in your seat. Yeah. yeah. When you went out, you didn't have any oomph like the ejection seat that would get you over the rudder, so you That's was hit or miss if you could hit the rear end of the plane. So I landed. Uh-huh. And what did you do, jump out of the plane and get get out of there? Well, no, by the time I could slow it down. <laughs> yeah. But they, they didn't do anything to me. They didn't, like, court-martial you for disobeying their instructions or anything? Well, I think it was, I can't remember. But you let some to, other dummy go to the plane and take it, the thing off, right? It, it, it had to be like, uh, what order? Who said what? I didn't hear that. The radio was off. <laughs> but I was going to tell you something interesting. This is a very, very uh, interesting little tidbit, too. I, I suppose I should do it on there. It's running. Yeah, go ahead. But is it running? Yeah. Oh, yeah. He just left it run because you kept talking, so he ran it. Well, shame on you guys. <laughs> well, we you can, if I, you say anything really embarrassing, we can always edit I, it I, out. Yeah. I, I've, I've been cornered here. <laughs> um, no, uh, this was Breast Harbor, <clears throat> and, and uh, they kept our fighter strip and us back from following inland even farther until later, at which time we were then uh, moved to Reims, the Champagne capital of the world. And I think I remember Champagne. <laughs> but anyway, um, uh, we were flying over the hedgerows and strafing uh, uh, this regiment. And uh, because we were supporting the uh, this, the our troops trying to dislodge this German regiment that uh, was uh, covering our our uh, our navy or everybody anybody to be using Brest Harbor, and this was this was we were supporting our troops for the big, uh, the whole uh, job of uh, dislodging the German regiment on Brest Harbor. So our fighter group temporarily got nicknamed the, the uh, Brazier Brigade <laughs> because, because we supported Brest. <laughs> Here were the air cover. <laughs> we supported Brest. Okay. So much for the stories. Well, people... Which were all true, by the way. People yeah. today don't realize the numbers involved with, with World War II. Because, like, the Normandy campaign itself, I think it was over 600,000 Germans were either casualties or captured or... And that was just during the Normandy campaign. You know, and you saw not only that, but then the cross Lorraine and all the way through the Battle of the Bulge. I mean, oh, yeah. it's just people today don't have a conception of the statistics of involved with that that period and all the armament and mechanisms and. Well, you saw it flying over the, the landscape. I suppose you had an idea what the what it looked like in terms of the. The machine machinery of war. Uh, our, our scope wasn't that broad, and uh, of course we were we were busy. We were trying to run an airplane, and mm -hmm. you know, we were you weren't what, sightseeing. We, we were the crew, <laughs> <laughs> crew of one. Do you remember the German we had speak to us uh, last summer sometime? He was in the German German infantry. And he said that they dropped a frag bomb like you talked about, and his group of 256 guys, only 25 of them survived. And so they went back to Germany. They, they, they had no you know, army to fight with. And as they were going into Germany, the MP stopped them and said, where are you going? Well, we're going back to our country. 
he said, you guys are deserters. We're going we're gonna, to uh, court-martial you. So they turned their guns on these MPs and killed them. And then they snuck up into Holland and stayed until the end of the war. Do you remember that story? I missed that. I wasn't there. I never heard this before. Oh, God. Now, this yeah. guy came to this country. Mm -hmm. guy became an engineer at Honeywell and did quite well in this country. Uh, Roll knows the story. Roll Knudsen got him. He brought him in to talk. I yeah. thought maybe you got the copy of his story. Wow, you know, that's you might, amazing. You might have on this one. I'm going to look for it. When I put this disc on and look on a big uh, television screen, my son, in fact, all my three sons got big screens. <laughs> Everybody has. The new modern me. TVs, you mean? The big. The 50, 60 inches. <laughs> but. Um, I remember we came down, we, we were doing an armed reconnaissance, and we caught, uh, I don't know what uh, the groups are, but a, a battalion or uh, it, it was more than a few squads. It was a lot of uh, German uh, ground troops, and uh, we caught them running across a field trying to get away or something. And we came, all of us, there, there had to be, it was just a flight of four. And uh, we came across this field and there were a lot of troops down there. And they were running. And we came across that field and we had to do it quickly because we had to be nose down. <laughs> we couldn't nose down too long or we'd be part of it. Uh, but uh, I remember with we were spraying with our 850 calibers, and I remember fishtailing, going yeah. across that field, just like mowing along. Were you coming behind them or at them? No, they were running away. Running away, so behind them. But we so were you could uh, use your tail and move the direction of the airplane so you could get more oh, coverage. Oh, I... You kicked the rudder. Yeah. Right and left rudder. Yeah. I just, I was spraying. Yeah. We all did. Hmm. It's, yeah. a, it's a terrible memory to have. It is. It is terrible. That's why some people have it all their lives. I mean, I've heard stories about these veterans coming back. They say they, they can never get that thought out of their mind. Well, there's one thing that helps me, and that's thinking what happened in Germany to people like with last names like me. Yeah. You know, there's stories from World War II. I can't even repeat them. You know, they're so horrible. And uh, there was never a more justified war than the Second World War. And yeah. thank goodness you guys won. Well, I think that we had divine intervention on it, too. We had some really good luck, like in the Battle of Midway. Oh. My God, that thing was a disaster right from the beginning. For which for those dive bombers finally getting all four carriers. I mean, we were losing everything until the end there. Yeah. One of the things we talked about uh, before we came over was the the next generations, you know, that they're not necessarily teaching World War II like they probably should in our schools. You know, when I was in school, uh, my American history instructor was uh, Don Foss, who was Joe Foss's brother. <laughs> so we learned a lot about the, you know, the Second World War, but, uh, you know, Glenn was saying the new generations aren't, aren't learning these things. So... I think it's important to you know record this stuff and yeah, maybe my, it'll my get daughter up there. made made her kids sit in front of TV and watch the movie The Longest Day because she said those kids never learned about World War II or the uh, Battle of uh, the Balls or any of that stuff. And but she said they gotta get it. if they can't get it at school they're gonna get it at home. Did you? Uh were you, where were you during D-Day? Was that were you in England then, or were you still kind of transporting? No, in England. Oh, you were. 
Did you fly missions on on it June was, 6th? It wasn't until after that that they could they could uh, get a base established uh, on the mainland. Yeah. So they had uh, kind of taken the beaches and moved sort of into the northern part of Normandy. Yeah, I, I landed at Prestwick, Scotland. We, we were flown over um, on a C-47. And uh, they bussed and trained us, and we uh, ended up at Shrewsbury. Shrewsburg? Shrewsbury. Shrewsbury, yeah. okay. It was, I think, in the Midlands. Yeah, yeah I'm sure it was at least a month after the longest day, after the invasion, mm -hmm. before you could get into France. Because uh, it took quite a while to get inland in France. Oh yeah, well, and they had to prepare a strip. Yeah, well, that's right. That's another thing they had to do. They they had to build a uh, build a landing field. A landing strip. We we never had anything like a field outside of uh, when I was in training, hmm. like Loop Field. <coughs> now, were all of these fields with the metal mesh that yeah. you were landing yeah. on throughout that period of time? Well, I I can't remember real clearly when we were at Frankfurt. That's just at the starting to be near the time when Germany capitulated. Okay. And uh, I think that was, I can't remember if it was a strip or a full bore aerodrome. Now an eight hour mission, that's a long time. In no, a... it, no it, was, it was one mission of four hours. Okay. And that was... <clears throat> we we took I don't remember where we took we flew top cover mm -hmm. for the uh, uh, what was the the uh, not not the heavy bombers but uh, well they had B twenty fives which was that Mitchell and, and, and the A twenty the A twenty was that they called it a Boston and a Havoc depending on if it's British or American I don't know what the British A twenty was uh, U S yeah. And um, let's see, there was one other one too. I think the eight B twenty six. Yeah, yeah, that was. Was that an accident? That that was a Martin. I it, think it was a, it was a Martin. A, it was a fast and, plane. So it's a light uh, light bomber that's I twin I, engine. I don't recall. Yeah, okay. It was twin engine, mm -hmm. yeah. but uh, it had some problems. Well, they, it killed a lot of pilots. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. so. But it's because they. Until they got trained well. If you're trained well as a B-26 pilot, you can fly the plane great. But if you didn't get your airspeed up in time and try to take off, they would crash. Yeah, it it, it was maneuverable, I guess. Yeah, very maneuverable. But, but uh, it wasn't. A, mm -hmm. um, it it wasn't a secure plane to be in. No. Could you keep up, or you didn't have trouble keeping up with them? I suppose you had to throttle back almost as oh, a sure. fighter. We were faster than they were. So to to keep the top cover, would you go go faster and like go back and forth, or well, how did you? We never uh, at that time. The um, the German uh, air force was pretty decimated. We we caught planes on the ground and everything. Mm -hmm. That's it. Now, the story behind this again is you were... I, I, bar I bartered it mm -hmm. when I left. Mm -hmm. There was stuff. I, I can't remember. It was like months or weeks before. But um, come on around behind okay. me. Yeah. <clears throat> and then I got to get cranky. That's, you were you were asking about that. There's no nothing here. Here, let me give a quick picture of the cover page. This is the title page. Well, Deutschland, I know that. Erfacht, I don't know. There, camp, camp of struggle. Let's see. And the NSDAP, that's the Nazi party. Yeah, we need a good translation. Yeah. <clears throat> Oh, there's something. 
We have a German lady that attends. She'll be able to read this for us. Oh God, look oh, at that look picture. At that. Huh. What does it say there? Chancellor, I suppose, or something. I gotta wow, show that's that. a quality. Yeah, that's a younger picture too. I'm gonna show you something. That'd be during the 30s. Okay. Here. Oh, it's got color photographs, and they pasted them into the book. That's what they did. How do you like that? Yeah. Now watch. I'm gonna come to something. See that? Mm-hmm. Oh, see, see that? One. Oh wow, look at that. Oh my gosh. God, how many people do you think is in that picture? Maybe a million. Yeah. yeah. I want to be careful. Oh, and it keeps going. You haven't even opened it all the way. There's one more fold. Oh my god. At least. Holy Boy, moly. I don't think I've ever seen a picture that big. And I thought this was stolen. Holy, here, I'll hold this one. E easy. I'll hold this up. Easy. Incredible. And it's clear, you know, there's uh, detail. You can tell the faces of each one of these people on this end. 1933, that picture was taken. Can you imagine when they were lining up all these guys? How many biffies they had to line up? <laughs> How many people had to go to the bathroom and said, hurry, please, finish? Incredible. Now, was there a book plate? We, that's one of the things we were, it didn't look like it. In the it's very front, front, when you open that. There should no, be. No, there's uh, Something shows the date that it was published. Um, yeah, I should get that too. Maybe they, she can translate. These would be the publication um, information. Yeah, if you want to see some, grab this. Okay, got it. How do you like that? It's heavy. Yeah? Yeah. You know, and there's pictures almost in every page. I thought this was stolen. Wow. What is it? I think it's an SS dagger. Wow. Does it have insignia on it? No, nothing here. So you thought this was gone with that guy that uh, stole something? I think there's a button that you have to push something. to release it, maybe? This thing button? button yes. In? Yes, it is. Ah, can't push it. Maybe you pull it from this end. There. No, I guess I'm not it. Oh man, that's tough. No, it's in Probably the... hasn't been opened in a while. No. <laughs> I don't think it was ever opened. Maybe it's fake. Well, it feel looks like it's heavy enough. Yeah. If you're gonna if you're gonna open it up. First, put this on. Oh! <laughs> wow! Was that an armband? Yeah, it's an armband. I'm. Uh, no, I. Right arm? If, if you do that, I'm going to have to shoot you. Yeah. <laughs> or stab you. He's got the. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go ahead, put it on. <laughs> I dare you. <laughs> Can I take a look at the, the rifle? Or the rifle, the, rifle. Uh, the knife? Yeah. There's something at this end too. What is that? Maybe that's the. There's some oh, yeah. Here, let's releases. put that. Get that close up on that. Yeah, it's got a uh, Nazi it's... insignia of some sort, and there's one on the top. I don't know what that is, but I'm sure this means something. All that. What do you think that is? Wood. Careful. Hey, you could cut yourself. Yeah. 
I have very, no idea. very interesting. See, you that, thought you'd lost that. that put this on your belt right here, right? Does this hang from your belt? I don't know. Huh. There's something written on that. And where did you get this? Did you barter for this or? Yeah. 